Modern has been rocked by some recent uh, huge BNRs, and uh, the 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 biggest hit was to control archetypes in general. The diversity of control strategies has fallen to an abysmally low level for the moment uh, in terms of competitive viability and presence in the metagame. However, this is the one shining beacon of hope that seems to be persisting through it. It's classic blue-white control, playing almost no creatures. In this case, we get to play three Snapcaster Mage. Welcome back to the format. Um, I'm happy to have you. Since the banning of Mystic Sanctuary, this is one of the best ways to gain advantage from having incidental value in our graveyard. This is the challenge winning deck from this weekend. It won the Saturday challenge, the first challenge since uh, that BNR announcement. So what are we doing here? We're basically playing a blue-white control strategy in the most classic sense. We're playing some Teferi Time Ravelers, we're playing some Jace the Mind Sculptor, and we're playing Teferi Hero of Dominaria. These are our main ways to win the game. Obviously, Teferi Time Raveler doesn't actually have any way to win the game on it, but uh, Jace and Teferi do. We've also got Cryptic Command, uh, Force Negation, Archmage's Charm, Mana Leak, and one copy of Logic Knot as ways to interact with our opponent's spells on the stack. You can see very clearly this deck is uh, stilted against a very aggressive metagame. In addition to the four Path to Exiles, we've got an Oust and a Timely Reinforcements in the main deck. Um, Spell Snare is a general all-purpose tool in the metagame against Burn, you're hitting Boros Charm, against... Uh, Jund and otherwise you can ren sixes uh tarmogoyce against opposing control decks you can hit their mana leaks in game one so seems generally reasonable opt smooths us out all over the place i like the inclusion of one narset here uh just fine zero shark typhoon is a little suspect to me but i it's possible that i won't miss them as we are playing the deck we also celebrate the return of a Celestial Colonnade. We'll see if this actually seems more playable than it has in the last little while. I, I don't know that it will be, but maybe. Um, no copy of Gaia Reach Sanitarium in our mana base as a uh, wonderful dream scenario for Narset. I don't know if that's right or wrong, but I definitely think four copies of Field of Ruin is probably where you want to be at the moment. And then we've got a sideboard that deals with the majority of problematic cards in Modern. So... All that out of the way, let's go into the Modern League here with our squeaky clean blue-white control deck. Nothing interesting, nothing particularly fun. Just good mom and pop. Meanwhile. Missionary style blue-white control. <laughs> Ooh, woo. <laughs> Blue white. This Lord Michael, this is what it looks like when you give up. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. And by the way, um, fun fact, uh, Sam Black wrote an article about enigmatic incarnation today which is behind a star city games paywall so um enigmatic is likely to take off reasonably soon i think i'm just going to spend all of tomorrow night playing enigmatic incarnation on stream it's probably the the most efficient way to spend my time i might even does it reference me um tangentially yes it doesn't reference me by name Uh, but he does reference my tweet about my 5-0, and, and uh, he says specifically that's how the archetype was brought to his attention. So, okay, there's no Luris. I'm going to tuck the timely and just hope that that's the right choice here. We're on the play. Um, so, yeah, it, it, I mean, it does reference my tweet, so yes, it does reference me. He doesn't reference me by name, but that's fine. He just describes me as a player, a player whose tweet made it to him and thus put me on the on the map for him. Or put the archetype on the map for him. So it is possible that I will get some residual residual gain spirits. Merfolk. Well, this is horrifying. We do have some copies of Supreme Verdict in our deck. So 
potentially will be a okay here. Not a third blue source is not my favorite. But Teferi is a great draw here. T -t -t tempo baby. Stay a while and listen. Boop. Alright, I would like to hit more lands, please. The hell? Well, this sucks. Um, whenever you cast a Merfolk spell, you may tap or untap target permanent. So that lets them get uh, sort of combo style mana off their Marrow Regiri. So we'll just upkeep path this sucker. They can't make their counter spells uncounterable, so pretty comfortable to... Um, get into a fight over that if they were willing to. Ooh. Y'all think they have any green spells? What are the chances they are playing green spells? Jumpstart Islands? Oh, yeah, yeah. This is the Mill Island. <clears throat> it's the Millstone. Um, is it useful for me to path now or wait and see how they split up their attacks? Yeah, we can wait and see. Okay, we did. We did hit a land, and it's an especially good one to have because we could finally take them off of their damn uh, cavern of souls, um, and we'll still have access to logic not this way, or or um, path to exile. Not both, but either is probably enough. I would like them to split up their attack so I can path the creature that's attacking to fairy, so I can buy another card draw out of him. But we'll see. They used Cavern for Lord. Oh, 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 yeah. I missed a, um... I missed an opportunity. Crap! This is frustrating. Uh... Seems like a waste. Well, so... Yeah, I know. No, what I wanted to pitch was Logic Knot, but I guess we could just concede that my Teferi is never... No, my Teferi... This Teferi is going to die. This Teferi is about to die, yeah. I mean... Yeah, I guess that's what you're saying, is like, just, just, uh, just let him go. Can we pitch to 5e? I don't want to pitch the Teferi 5. Yeah. <sighs> okay, they're just holding up uh, Force of Negation here. Uh, I have a live Archmage's Charm. They have a Trickster? No, no Trickster. Yeah, I want to path the Master of Waves because if somehow I end up controlling one of their merfolk, my merfolk will have plus one and plus one in Island Walk. Heartcast Force. Yeah, Curse Catcher exists. 
Um, they could be playing green merfolk. I don't think they'll be playing any, but... Uh... What? They're just really excited to resolve that right now? Yeah, Kumeda Speaker, that's the one. Okay, apparently they were just really excited to resolve that right now, which is fine. I don't, don't really understand why now, um, but I'm okay with it. Um, I would like to draw a land. Yeah, it seems a little hinky. Um, I kind of feel like bounce Lord of Atlantis and just draw a card here is fine. Um, or we just go Jace Brainstorm. They have a force of negation. I'm pretty okay with that. Jace Brainstorm. Try to get a land drop. Jace dies. They hit me for two. But Jace with a land drop and or find a verdict seems like everything I need right now. So, yeah. I, I, um, <clears throat> so this is not what I said I wanted. Uh, I am going to hold on to the force of negation, um, because, um, I want to have it in case I need to force through this path on their turn, in case they split up their creatures in a way where I can exploit it. So, yeah, exactly. The deck shipped us something even better, exactly. I wanted to find a way to be in good shape after my Jace died. And Jace was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Listen, don't count me out of here, all right? We're going to be fine. You and me, we're going to go for some food later. We're going to up these merfolk. It's going to be fantastic. Hey, you been to uh, Johnny's down on uh, 72nd and Main? It's fucking unbelievable, man. <laughs> we wanted the horse the deck gave us the kingdom please split up your attackers no they didn't bye jace Okay, this, this, this game is a journey of discovery. I want everyone to know that our quest this game is to find out how many million islands they're playing. Because apparently that is what's going to happen. We're going to find out exactly how many islands we're, they're, they're playing. How many islands could they have? <laughs> 16. Um, Four caverns. Three or four... Um, Three or four copies of Waterlog Groove. Um, I mean, it could be 16. What is happening here? What are you doing? Dat member. Sure. It's fine. <laughs> They're going to have a bear left over. I feel like this is fine. Like, the snap path was going to be good, and it's still good. Like, this is fine. How many Mutavolts do they play? I, I, exactly. So you're, you're introducing even more non base Because they're, like, if this is mono blue merfolk, they should be playing as many um, non-basics as they can. Do I want to just jam to fairy here? They have two cards in hand, which, as Roy would say, is kind of hinky. Um, I feel like having Cryptic up and then being able to Archmage Charm at the end of their turn here is just fine. You like Teferi? I don't. I've lost too many Tempo decks. Yeah, exactly. Benthic Biomancer. That's fine. Wow. They're Im immediately rummaging, so their hand is not strong. Dumps an island. That makes sense. 
just take this. There's basically 0% chance they'll counter this. I guess I could steal their Biomancer when they attacked. Yeah, I think we're casting the Teferi 5 for sure. Question is, how much mana do I want left up afterwards? I think 3 is optimal in case I draw another Snapcaster Mage. It's your last card, opponent. Nothing good. Good. Perfect. I'm waiting for it to 70. To, to 7 re? Whoa, but shouldn't the 7 in Teferi replace the E? Because there's a progression from the second character to the third character to the fourth character. No, shouldn't it be seven airy? <laughs> that's a typo. Okay, that's what I thought. I, I figured you were, you were the, still the same Roy that I knew and loved. I, w I was hoping. The nice thing about this the flooded strand is it looks like a land, and it's actually a land. Because, you know, it could be a mystic sanctuary, but it's not. I've got an active colonnade I'm casting to fairy. Life feels good. Oh, shoot. Crap. I was really expecting that to resolve. It's fine. Their creatures don't have uh, island walk, so they have to walk into death to hit my to fairy here, which I'm not. I wonder if they have another Merfolk Trickster to tap my Colonnade. Ten percent. They have a trick. Oh, that's not how that works. Okay, never mind. Okay. How many Force of Negations have they had? Three. Yikes. And they are sandbagging around uh, around my wrath. Uh, although that's pretty much the perfect draw here. Blue, white, white. There we go. Bye, friends. I wonder if they have more dismembers and such in their hand right now. Yeah, John Finkel somewhere is uh, is uh, rolling in his chair. Getting a stiffy? Wh whatever the thing that happens when people are happy about what just happened in the world somewhere. John Finkel got a warm, happy feeling in his heart in that moment. Although, again, they've already gone through three of their Force Negations, so like I'm not actually sure that they have more. Rolling in his money because he works in finance. Yeah, that's that sounds accurate. On top of a pile of money with many beautiful ladies. Just asking. Yeesh. It cost $80 million. Have we talked about the Time Spiral Remastered cards yet? Uh, we have not. Um, I'm super hyped. Super, super hyped. 
I'm like the tiniest bit disappointed that it isn't more in terms of percentages. Well, so Time Time Spiral Remastered Roy is a supplemental set, so it's not following the regular rotation. It's all death and taxes. Well, they've only announced white cards so far, so I'm not entirely sure what what you're in what way you're commenting on what they're it's I, I mean, yes, they they've only released white cards. And one assumes next up they're going to re release only blue cards. And then it would follow that after that they're going to re release only black cards. And then we're going to be complaining that there are no red and green cards in the set. But then, of course, they're going to release the red cards. And we're going to say, aha, now they're making green the worst color in Magic. And then, of course, they'll release the green cards. Uh, Non-chaos shifted mana tithe. Uh, I am not happy about that because it wasn't old bordered. I wanted an old border mana tithe so we could have old border mana tithe played alongside old border for spike, but to each their own. My opponent enabled my timely, which I am thrilled about. Excellent. Um, I could opt for like a Teferi here. Yeah, might as well. Probably don't need that against the Aether. Well, yeah, okay, the land is worse. SRAM's an oddity. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm not a fan of SRAM being a wasted slot in the set. I say wasted. I'm just like, it's a card I don't care about. It's a card I don't think is particularly powerful in Eternal formats. Like, I really 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 think that there were more than enough cards for eternal formats that should have been given a white uh given an old border and were oh right okay all my dudes are tapped okay this isn't the end of the world sucks but it's not the end of the world um Anyway, I, I think there were, yeah, yeah. Um, people were specking that some popular Pioneer cards were making it. Well, Thraben Inspector is already in there, right? So. I just think Modern and, and Legacy deserve a lot, deserve a lot more love than Pioneer does. I like Pioneer. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of Pioneer, but. That's a good draw. That's a great draw. So now we can go snap Cryptic Command to bounce my Colonnade. Can I? Do I have a Cryptic in the yard? Where did it go? Must be an exile. Oh, it got, it got forced, didn't it? I guess we'll just go snap block with Archmage's Charm. Uh, I don't remember what they were at this moment, Roy. It was, it was something about, like, preemptive positional something. And I was like, what? I have no idea what, like, half those words mean in this context. It was just words that, that they, they just sounded like jargon to me. It was like, what? Yeah. It had to do with one of the, um... They found their fourth force negation. So not only are they playing all four force negations, they've drawn them in their top 30. That's fun. Okay. Well, we're at a stalemate, but generally speaking, my cards are on a higher power level, and they should be at zero force negations left in their deck, so... Better lucky than good? Is that the point behind this game? OP has 10 basics. Uh, in play, they have 9. 
That's a terrible draw. I'm going to hold this I, uh, delta in case of the... Oh, there is an island in the graveyard. Um, right, they discarded it off, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, 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 Benthic Biomancer. Um, I'm going to hold the polluted delta in case we pick up uh, Teferi. Or not Teferi, uh, Jace. The other Jace. There's one more Jace. There's one more Jace and there's one more Teferi 5 in my deck. I love a good stalemate. Maybe they'll draw more Aether Vials. It'll be great. Fuck. <sighs> We're gonna die, aren't we? Oh. Oh, no. No, I wasn't. I mean, Stalemate is a chess term, but it's used in a lot of non-chess games. Good top decks. Spreading Seas actually crushed me. We had a uh, snap verdict on top, but those are the breaks. Okay, um, don't need these. It's probably poor, definitely not great. Six. How likely is Veil of Summer out of the deck? Probably about zero percentage. So they, they never fetched a green source. I think they're just playing them to 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 uh, to cycle. So I think that basically we just treat them as as green and no other color. Yeah, exactly. They played no fetches, they played no breeding pool, they had ten basic islands they never put a basic forest into play if they were playing green cards in their main deck i mean is it possible they're playing veil of summer on their sideboard sure but i would be more worried about them actually being able to cast it versus being worried about getting messed up by it narset's probably kind of poor here yeah, yeah, the lack of Mutavolt seems incredibly strange. But they did draw four Force Negations, so they could be playing four Mutavolts and they just drew none of them. It's not like they have a lot of card selections. So they, they Natty drew four Force Negations, and they... What are these hands? Like, they... Good lord. 25 land deck. 25. Awesome. Super. I did not. Yep. Yeah. All right. My bad. Sorry. Little, little annoyed. Little annoyed. Both with losing the last game and having to mull to six last game and five here in a deck that, largely speaking, should be fairly consistent and stable. <sighs> no, of course, of course, they're not going to play a single spell this game. That's going to be this story. Awesome. It's going to be all Aether Vial. That was a terrible story. I didn't say it wasn't. I did not say it wasn't. Okay. 
Uh, isn't it were with the U? There once was an er ugly merfolk. He was so ugly, everybody died. The end. They drew zero of this card last game, too. My opponent has now shown me two reasons where it's not a complete failure that I kept in Narset. Okay, now they all have Island Walk. None of my decisions will ever matter ever again. Okay. Time to field them and rip verdict. Uh, we might die before that's relevant. But yes, it is time to potentially field them and rip verdict. Okay. Just, uh, yeah. So I'm pretty sure if they adapt this, I can actually grab it in response. And then when the adapt resolves... Um, Oh, there is a new command, okay. Uh, and then when the ability resolves, I'm the one who will get to loot. So that's kind of interesting. Please just put lethal into play. Please. Yeah, perfect. Please all, but adapt this one, though. Because then I can mess you up a little bit. They didn't adapt it. God damn it. We're going to have the Mystical Dispute in hand for the one blue spell they play this game, and we're not going to have the blue mana to play it. That is, that is how this is about to go down. They have more? Oh, for the love of Christ. All right. Yeah, I mean, we just got smashed. Uh, the game one was very close. Game two was a joke. Just absolutely annihilated there by Merfolk. They had all four Force of Negations in game one at the exact correct times they needed them, give or take, and we just got beat up by it. Only so much you can do. Yep. Oh, Roy, I was just looking at the, uh, the list of, um, chess terms and it was discovered, discovered check, discovered something. It was discovered something. It's the, it was the Wikipedia list of, of chess terminology. Once again, we have a one lander. Opponent also mulls, so that's something. There we go. That means peace moves out of the way and the peace from behind delivers the check. I can't even parse that right now. Oh, I see what it means. Yeah, I see. That doesn't... That isn't easily understandable at all. 
I, I know I know the move you're describing. Yeah, I know I know the move you're describing. I understand the move you're both describing. I just don't understand the, why that's called quote discovered. Like that that's not I don't <laughs> What? No no part of that was discovered. I don't yeah, anyway. It's fine. Yeah, no, it's all, it's all good. I mean, like, this is the kind of thing that happens to Magic players sometimes, except that I'm much more familiar with Magic terminology, so I know where all the weird stumbling blocks that we have in Magic terminology are. No, no, I understand. Like, every, every Magic term that isn't easily parsed by, by the layman... Like I'm aware of it. Every time I say it, I'm like, I know what I, I know what I mean, but I know that it's not necessarily obvious to everyone. Yeah, exactly. Converted mana cost is the classic, and now we get mana value. Where, by the way, Alex, could we have not just said cost? How, 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 how hard would it be for the rules? to interpret there's there's yeah there's a term change coming in um yeah there's a term change coming in um strict haven converted mana cost is no longer the term it's now called mana value because uh, i feel like specific cost is used yeah sure sure i understand i'm just um the, the the word mana cost has been used on a very small number of cards. That's, there's that one really, really cool card from, I want to say M21, that has power equal to the number of different mana costs in your graveyard, and it literally spells out on it, like, one black black and two and a black are different mana costs. Um... If I try to path, they're going to have a rattle chains, right? I'm just pretending that I'm going to play against uh, Infect here. Yeah, Embodiment of Agonies. Enters with a plus one, plus one counter. Okay, got it. The point is, I just feel like the word cost would be so much cleaner. Am I crazy? Hey, look, they had the exact card I said they were going to have. Kel Surprise. I took one less damage by doing the thing. Problem would arise with cards like Thrill of Possibility. Sure, I understand. But here's the problem. Like, no matter what we do, there's going to be a problem. So I think, like, saying cost is, like, the most simple, straightforward, and intuitive version of of, of what we need to have. So... I'm not saying it actually solves any problem one way or another. I'm just saying... Um... So if I bounce Rattle Chains, I'll take one, two, three, four next turn. If I bounce a Mausoleum Wanderer, I'll take one, two, three, four next turn. So it doesn't matter. If they want to put their Aether Vial up to three, I'll bounce the Rattle Chains in order to be able to get extra value out of it. Plus, this denies them having the ability to cast cards with Flash. Is value used for anything else in Magic Comp rules? Uh, uh, yes, but I think only as like a descriptor. Like, va values are things. So I'd be like, um, when you're looking at last known information, I think to describe the quantity of something as the value. But that might be wrong.
Okay, so I know one of the two cards in their hand is Rattle Chains. Hopefully they fetch here in response. Will Archmage's Charm... No, okay, good. Good, 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 good. good. Of course they wouldn't cast their Rattle Chains aggressively. So if I try to counter the Supreme Phantom with Archmage's Charm, they can um, play the Rattle Chains and then sack one of their Wanderers. Vile is on three, yes. So I think I think I'm gonna try to path the phantom, Bill rattle chains, and then we gotta rip the the verdict here. We'll do it after damage because they have multiple outs for my my path here. So, um, and then we can snap path afterwards to take something down, just to be semi mana efficient. But everything's flying, just like playing against Merfolk. Everything has evasion, so nothing that I do is going to matter too much. Which is a fun way to play Magic. I, I love it when my decisions don't matter. It's great. It means I get to feel good about losing to variants. Feels nice in the face of Mutavolt. Um, sort of. Sort of. What? It's not what you're supposed to do, opponent. Why? Did, okay. So. I mean, if they have Drog Skull Captain, they can eat me alive here. They have to know they can do it, though. Nope. Interesting. Okay. expected a gun punch all i got was a tickle something about that doesn't sound right i mean i'm okay with it i'm not complaining i'm just saying it sounds raunchy they gave the rattle chains hex proof with itself i did not know that was an option rude um i suppose i'll bounce one of the wanderers tax their mana for next turn hopefully we just can find a verdict like literally the only thing i'm doing here is just trying to sandbag until i can find a verdict so if it's on the top of the deck we could be okay the fact that i killed their mutavolts is actually kind of annoying to me because it means these snapcaster mages don't actually have any value right now but we'll see Still a path in the yard. There's two. There are two path to exiles in my graveyard. They're 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 relevant. It's just my mana's a little bit choked up. Like I can't. Especially with the the double mausoleum wanderer that they had. Yeah.
Like, Teferi's, like, basically irrelevant in this matchup. It's not, not any value. Yeah, good for them. They know what's up. Just going in to kill me. I would have held the land if I were them. I don't really see any value in telling me that you don't have anything more here. But I want to tell my opponent they're playing the game wrong when they're killing me so well. Okay, their vial is on three, but they don't have the ability to play anything at instant speed. There are plenty of draws here that are not good enough, so go. Goes to combat. Well, this is lovely. Hopefully the, the card they have is not uh, Drug Skull Captain. Are we going to try stealing a Wanderer? Uh, yeah, I probably should have done that. No, apparently we're not. I mean, I could still try to steal one. I'll have to take one damage for it, so I'm not super thrilled about it. I mean, I can snap path twice here. So I feel like... Well, no. I mean, it's basically the same to snap path twice or snap and uh, Archmage's Charm. Either way, I have to... Sack of land. Okay, that resolved. So... Pretty sure I'm just firing off the second snap path here. Because Archmage's Charm next turn steals their remaining Mausoleum Wanderer. Uh, they can sack one Wanderer to save the other here, but like we end up pre uh, preventing the same amount of damage, so. If they have Drug Skull Cap, then I'm super duper dead, but I assume not at this point. Doot. All right, I'll take one. Let's top deck timely. Top deck timely. Is there anything else at three Skyclave? Uh, probably. But you know what we say about Skyclave Apparition. It doesn't have flying. It's not relevant at all right now, but... Eh, it kind of is. I have two Snapcaster Mage. Oust! I think I'm ousting one of my snaps. Is that real? Is that real? That's real. I'm ousting one of my snaps, right? 100%. I'm really excited to oust one of my snaps. I can do it at instant speed right now, though, so I don't need to do it proactively. Oust a snap, then draw a snap. I mean, I guess that's the plan. I'm trying to figure out what their hand is. They have three cards. Like, I can't... 
Okay, I have two cards and a fiery eyelet, so that's three cards again. Yeah, I can oust the snap, then Archmage's Charm, which would redraw the snap. The problem is, at that point, um, I don't have enough mana to snap for anything. Second Aether Vial. Nice. Love that. That's a great look for you, opponent. I'm a big fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I understand we could we could go snap out snap. I mean, I, I'm at this point, I'm definitely ousting a Snapcaster Mage. Unless they put something into play for 1-6. Yeah. We'll go to one. I'll gain three life opponent. You'll never defeat that. Never. I wonder if they have like vile spell queller here. Nope. Sealed. All right. All right, Apollo, what do you got? Show me the money. Nothing. All right. Fine by me. Show me the money. Jerry Maguire. Jerry Maguire. With uh, Tom Cruise. It's also the same movie with You Had Me at Hello. Yeah, well, again, as as with so many things in American pop culture, the lines become more famous than the movie that they're from. Not exactly sure. It's just like the cultural reach of the movie is bigger than the actual like like value of the narrative in and of itself. Am I going snap charm on this? They don't have a vial on two. They have one card in hand. Like, they could have Spell Queller, they could have Drog Skull Captain. They haven't had either of those yet, so... I don't know, let's see. I guess they could sack it in response to counter my charm, so this is kind of a loose. But my Teferi gets to bounce their Vial on 3 this turn cycle, so yeah, sure. Okay, so they didn't have an out for this, which is good. Um, oh, I could just bounce a Snap. What am I doing? You bounce a Snap here. They have another threat? Path me. Okay. Solid. As I said with our previous fetch land, the really nice thing about this card is it's actually a Mystic Sanctuary, but it's actually not a Mystic Sanctuary. Our deck has, our deck does in fact have dead draws now. Let us all celebrate the victory that, that Burn had over all of us.
My opponent is at 10, almost 10 minutes in clock. This is game one. Fun fact. Deadest manly in the Western Hemisphere. The dancingest of all the hemispheres, the Western Hemisphere. Do that, do that, do that, da, ba, do that, do that, do that, da. We're dancing, 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 dancing. That's a great throwaway Simpsons joke with the uh, Super Bowl halftime show. The dancingest hemisphere of all, the Western Hemisphere. They don't call it Eastern Swing. Uh, that's a different kind of Western, but yes. You right, dog. You right. Now do they have the Spell Queller? Tell me they have the Spell Queller now. Okay, good. Glad they don't. I'll have you know, Brian, I play both types of music. Country and Western. What is this? What horrible thing is about to happen to me here? They activated their vial for three, did nothing, concede? They just wanted to spook me. I appreciate my opponent. Now they skew. Love it. Love it. Uh, yeah, yeah, it could have been, but if they had that, I don't think they'd blow it on off, dude. Okay. Um. Because, like, they're losing a 2-1 flyer, and the 2-1 flyer almost wins them the game right there, right? So, like... That's that would be pretty sketchy. I'm not saying people wouldn't do it. I'm saying people shouldn't do it. Um, so we're on the draw. I don't. Oh, uh, maybe mystical disputes worth having here. I was trying to think of like, can I keep my force of negations in to pitch for turn one, aether vial, and I think the answer is no. And then I'd rather have mentor than narset in almost every situation we could be in. Because they are very likely to cut some of their removal. And so if I resolve my one mentor, it could manhandle them very quickly. Person handle them? No, manhandle is appropriate and offensively so. Man, you, you've ruined the term manhandle and therefore it is appropriate. We're, 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 we're just an awful, awful group. Um, double... Verdict is like kind of weird because I think <laughs> not medical term. Um, double verdict's kind of weird because they can queller a verdict, but then I have the second verdict, but then the verdict unlocks this the first verdict. But honestly, I'm okay with losing a verdict to gain a verdict because you know what they say a verdict lost is a verdict gained. Yep, that's what they say. I remember my grandfather sat me down as a young lad, taught me the great truths of the world. A verdict, verdict lost is a verdict gained. A verdict in the hand is worth two in the bush. That's, yep. A verdict for a verdict makes a shitty sentence. <laughs> Double verdict would be like kind of okay against humans until until you realize they're gonna go kite sail into meddling mage, and so they don't even have to take either of your verdicts. They just meddling mage it, and then you don't get to play any magic. You're just dead. <laughs> burn that verdict when we get to. I do. I do love the misquote. We'll burn that bridge when we get to it. Also, what up, Blitz? I hope you're doing well, friend. Have you seen my uh, spirits player's clock? It's uh, it's fantastical. No, I looked up the uh, modern metagame Blitz, and uh, Blitz is the number one deck. So we're pretty sure you're the winner.
We've sussed it out, and I think I think you are the winningest. Lamau. <laughs> A Lamau. I'm the winningest. Sweet. Oh, well, I miss Liam. The way that boy played Dredge. Mm. Mm. Right here. Right here, Roy. The way that boy played Dredge lives here. Right here in my heart. Oh no, it wasn't. When he started milling five every upkeep, he would he would get like he would get really into it, and yet still be super monotone. It was it was truly remarkable. One of those things you had to see to believe. So I'm pretty sure this turn we go to fairy bounce the vial. And that should clear the way for the verdict. But I don't actually have the double white. So I'm just gambling that I'm going to draw a second white source. Um, okay, good. Now I don't need to gamble. Magic Playing Magic the Gathering cards is not gambling. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. I found out today that KDA is like Usher, and they tell you that they're KDA at the beginning of their song. I can't remember what Usher song that is, but it always made me smile. Usher, Usher, Usher. It was so big when in like 2016. Did we play that song? I can't even remember what song it is, but I remember it was like it was just one of those things that uh Peace Out A Town? No, that 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 is not the name of the song. Unless you're quoting from the song. Which is possible. Are we taking seven this turn? I feel like we're about to take seven this turn. But if we take seven this turn, then we get the verdict and then we're in good shape. Who's let the who lets the dogs out? No. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure those are the most first coherent lyrics of yeah, yeah, but I don't, I don't remember that part. All I remember is the For some reason, that reminds me of the fact. So, um, when I was playing on cruise ships, one of the one of the best people I knew, um, or or pairs of people I knew, were were a, a duo called Unity, and uh, they're they're both Spanish. They're they're both from Spain, but they're English expats, and the guy is Scottish, and the, the girl is English, and um, which is a weird sentence, but Europe is awesome like that. Um, and, uh, they would always introduce themselves as being, uh, the, the unity duo. And they did have Americans asking them if they were Jewish, which I thought is very funny. All right. So, oh, that's an excellent pickup. Okay. So we can wrath here. They sack the spirit. We take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We go to five. Then we wrath again. Then we take four and we're mostly dead. Um, maybe we can dig our way out though. Is there any other option? No, not really. And then when they have the two muta vaults, we might have to cryptic on one turn and then try to figure our way out from that point. I can't believe they had selfless spirit exactly right there. It's so frustrating. Of course they would because it's it's post board against blue eye control, but yeah. But they would they would introduce themselves as the unity duo and then people were asking them if they were Jewish, which I just think is wonderful. 
Well, we, we won game one, Jiggy, so th there is some justice. Although I did 0-2 against Merfolk. In game one, they drew all four Force Negations in their top 30. None of them were, like, particularly relevant, but they were all just important enough that we lost. Because, like, right at the end, they were like, here's a 2-2, here's a Lord, here's a clone for my Lord, kill you. Yeah, I know, I know. Hey, I didn't lose my 5-0 to it, though. Yeah, yeah. Real talk, though? Dude, I'm so upset that you didn't get your 5-0 dump. But Sam Black wrote an article about uh, Enigmatic. What? Maybe they were worried about the clock. Yeah, Sam, Sam Black published today an article about Enigmatic. I will not be posting a PDF that I may or may not have of that article because it's behind a paywall and I have a PDF of it. I mean, I don't have a PDF of it, um, but it is behind a paywall and I don't have a PDF of it. But if I did have a PDF of it, I could share it with you directly because um, some of the discords I'm in have rules about me not doing that. To be fair, by the way, I did not go looking for this PDF. I did not. It was supplied to me. It was supplied to me. Basically without my asking for it. So. I respect the incredible hard work of people like Sam Black. And. But at the same time, I, I, I don't know if I respect the hustle. The insight and intelligence, yes. The hard work, absolutely. Hustle was not something I learned a good definition of as a, as a small, small child. So I don't know how to respect something I don't understand. Apparently it's something about sports. We finally got a good seven, huh? This is nice. Okay, can this one be taxes, please? Oh, no. Oh! Jiggy! It's happening! Oh, they didn't have a follow-up? That's a weak sauce, OP. It's weak sauce. How are you gonna how are you gonna keep that hand? How are you gonna keep that hand and not have a follow-up play? Come on now. Come on now. About to savage this poor Kithian. Get the fuck out. <laughs> accidentally queued into Pioneer. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe they accidentally queued into modern. I did play against someone last night who said that they were ready to get savaged by a sick kin and brew, and I uh, I was I was not playing that, so I had to disappoint them. This is pretty much how I would have expected this game to go if you had told it to me in the abstract. I played Kithian into Mox Amber on turn one. South Korea has zero ugly people. I died All right, all right. We got the the Asia files in chat just going off. You guys enjoy. What? Oh yeah. Can we talk about the flavor text here? I may be free of the amber, but I'm still in prison. I am so goddamn impressed. This is in the 1-1 one, one bracket, too. God bless you, opponent. i be so sad when I eat you alive, but... Oh! Oh, they got me so good! Ah! 
You had my interest, now you have my attention. Okay. Alrighty. Whoo! They're going hard here. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I mean, you know, they got me good. I, I assume this is how they managed their way into the 1-1 bracket. Yes, opponent, you have a dryad militant, but what do they have to say about the snapcaster mage? Do you have a path to exile, or will you suffer? Oh, also, Jig and uh, Brian, now that I've got you both here, um, dude, the, the, the podcast episode from this week is actually doing doing quite well on uh, on metrics, as much as that matters. Like, we got a lot of downloads of it, which is exciting. So I'm pretty sure I'm jamming Jace and uh plussing on them um it's just it's just it's just kind of exciting because yeah I, I think that's exactly what it was and i think that's the reason that i was so compelled to do it so again like it wasn't um yeah but you don't have to listen to the whole thing in one go you don't have to listen to the whole thing and you know if you read the description of it which i understand a lot of people wouldn't do but Anyway, the point is that for the people who want more content, there is more content, and I thought that that was important. Oh! Oh, no! Oh! I didn't, didn't, didn't account for force of virtue. Nope. No, I did not. You did use that right, Brian. You did use that right. Well done. Roy, give him a gold star. <laughs> yes, the gold star is blossoming defense. <laughs> Oh my god. I think I'm going to counter draw here because I'm... Oh, I can't counter. Or draw. Okay, so we're just digging for... Um... Okay, So I have tap draw next turn. So we'll take six this, tur this turn. We'll tap draw next turn. All right, that turned on the Mita Vaults. Oh, that's perfect because I have the field. Please attack. Please attack. Perfect. Okay, yeah, we're so we're gonna take six this turn and then we have access to the cryptic for next turn. But now their mutavolt is down, so if I do find a verdict, we're in great shape. I haven't hit one yet, so hopefully we will. Now we can dodge the mana tithe on the cryptic command. <laughs> Thank God. Yikes.
Okay, now we got snap, cryptic, bounce the snap. I guess I should actually go snap, cryptic, tap, draw, because there's a reasonable shot they have more removal. Like, can we assume they're playing some amount of removal? I think that's fair, and they've probably picked it up by now. It's probably some of the dead cards in their hand, so... I think I'm going to go with that instead. Just be lucky and draw. No, no, I, I get it. I get it. No, no I, I got ahead of it, Roy, before I, uh, before I wrecked myself. I checked myself. Okay, it's getting, it's getting close. <laughs> Direct. Uh, yeah, this is fine. This, this is what I meant. So, Snap's gonna block Brimaz. I'm gonna path the Kithian. Um, shit, that puts it in attacking. So we're going to two here. Super inconvenient. I mean, it's fine, but just have not not been drawing enough well enough so far. That is exactly what I what I was. I, I don't know what about the way you phrased that had that in my head, Roy. But okay, just dead. Super. We've been definitely a little bit unlucky with, like, the matchups here. Oh, see you, Brian. Good luck with whatever you're up to. Definitely been a little bit unlucky with the matchups here because our control plan is not lining up at all. But then again, like, I did expect a very aggro-heavy meta. Um, but this build is also only playing two verdicts, which seems super, super light. Let's get him in game two, now that I know what I'm up against here. Hand is medium, but... Uh... Just opting off the bat, because if they put a planes into play and they have a mana tithe up, they'll just fire it off on my opt. I guess that probably would be okay since I have the backup opt, but I don't know. Concerned about getting set up early. Militant. Okay.
Isamaru. Wow, they're just all in. Wow. This this is this was the Mox Amber deck of legend. This is the Mox Amber deck that people proposed back when when it came out and it was like is this the thing that people will do? I don't know. Maybe. All right. Um pretty excited for my Teferi to get mana tithed here. Unless I guess I could pitch a path to to a tie that they have one yeah perfect so now i get to resolve this timely i just picked up so this kind of works out in my favor which i'm a fan of i like this working out in my favor big big fan of this this is everything i want and more oh yeah yes absolutely c'est bon Conda Lord of Iganjo. Yeah. Bushido 5. <laughs> I think the most important thing someone's got to tell Conda is that he was the first, um, uh, the first non artifact that had indestructible. I'm fairly confident of that fact. Oh, yeah. Yes, opponent. Give it to me harder. Oh, just, just, oh, the massacre. Uh, yeah, I believe so. So, Indestructible was released in Darksteel. Um, Champions of Kamigawa was the next block. The only set in between was Fifth On, and I don't think there was a single non-artifact with Indestructible. Don't quote me on that, but I'm fairly, fairly confident. Uh, yeah, it was introduced in 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 Mirrod and Block in the in the set specifically in the set Dark Steel. Dark Steel, of course, being the the indestructible material on Mirrod. Everything that had Dark Steel in the name was indestructible, and they actually continued that theme in Scars of Mirrod. Seems like my opponent's deck's a little bit soft to uh, timely reinforcements. Kithian. That's fine. They don't have enough other creatures to get it active. Draw land. Is it a jackal? Is it a jackal? It's a jackal. Land? Yes. That's my gym. When's pumping in the club? That's my gym. That's my gym. <laughs> oh that's great oh they had the second one yikes gee i wonder what i can do about that i don't know if there's any out for this situation good lord did i just kill both of you i didn't kill the kithian Oh, brief aside, because I was listening to it while I was at the gym today. Holy crap, the singer, Manuel, who did Gas, Gas, Gas. Dude, that, that, that guy's got a singing voice like Ronnie James Dio. He is a monster. Dude is fantastic. Feel like I should find more music by that human, because, like, that was A++++. Like, holy crap. This can gain indestructible. I'm an idiot. Um... Okay. Forgot about that little line of text. Wheel. At least I'm going to make them spend three mana. Fun. 
Uh, man, this is really bad. Whoops. All right. The hell's the other side of this? Becomes a 4 4. I'm still losing my Teferi this turn. They didn't indestructible it. What? The backside sucks. I mean, it's a 4 4 indestructible every turn. That's not bad, dude. Like, that's really good against a control deck. Like, the only answers I have for that are paths. And, um, no, I think they just punted. Um, yeah, rad, rad Chad. Rad Chad's a pretty good walker. Shame scoop. I don't, I don't, I don't think it was a shame scoop because the shame would imply that they realized they made a mistake. I don't know if they know they made a mistake because like Kithian... Like, the reason I punted there is because, like, if you ask me what that card does, I could tell you. But I looked at it on the battlefield. I saw the, the block of text that was... Good lord, what is with the mulligans with this deck? This is... this What, is this the third time I'm going to five this league? Um, anyway. Um, yeah, um... So when you look at the text on the card in Magic Online, there's just this big block about the attack clause where it flips him, and you actually can't see the activation for the for the um, for the indestructible. So I'm assuming my opponent also did not realize their card could flip. Which obviously they, sh they should because they're playing it, but you know, the number of times that I've screwed up what. Uh... I think we'll be okay. Once they attack, they can't um, mana tithe. Mana tithe currently costs two. I think I'll pick off the vault first, and then I can untap and pick off the Thalia. Oh, I had the field though. That was probably not correct. Okay. Yeah, it was definitely a mistake. Because now I have to deal with... Well, I don't have to deal with the Kivian. As long as they don't... No, this is fine. As long as they don't get another um, creature down. And attacking. We'll see. <laughs> pays one for Mox Amber. Ooh. That's that's the synergy you're looking for. Think I'm okay with just taking this this turn and just opting? Like, because there's a reasonable shot that they have another Thalia in their hand. Or another Kithian. I can buy time. late on that one <laughs> yeah that is that is a peculiar interaction that definitely is definitely is real right there so i can path one of these this turn the thalia is basically not that relevant after this turn so i think i'm just gonna path the kithian
Yeah, I think so. Maybe EOT, though. Again, they're down to two cards in hand. They haven't played anything in a minute. Maybe they're hoping they get to verdict me. But I'm willing to bet they have a redundant copy of at least one of these creatures. Uh, that's fine. Yeah, the, the path on the Muta Vault earlier, I definitely screwed up. I'm in more more danger than I thought I would be by this point. Okay, that's that's really upsetting. Um, I think I have to path the Selfless Spirit now, and then Cryptic to tap their board and try to buy time until I can find a Wrath. So at least it all became very clear and clean all of a sudden. Well, that's frustrating. They have a Soul Guide Lantern to lock my snap off of being relevant. <sighs> oh man, if they have the Mana Tithe as their last card here. Really? They're digging for the mana tithe. That's a, that's a bold move. Now my snaps are free? Well, that's fantastic for me. Oh, yeah. Opponent asks, do I have a land in my hand? Uh, no. So this turn is probably snap, block Kitty and path Thalia. Forces them to pay three mana on the Kitty and they can flip it. I don't really care because next turn I can snap Cryptic to bounce it. Um, so I'll take three. Yeah, I think this is right. Snap, snap, block Kitty and path of Thalia. They have another one. I mean, I can't I can't play around that forever. So what I'm really hoping for is they don't have a backup Thalia. Because I would really like to be able to go snap snap uh, Cryptic next turn. 
giving them lots, lots of time to draw that backup Thalia, but didn't look like it. Nope. That is an exceptional draw. So this currently has a CMC of one. I think we just play this though. We're conceding to take three next turn. I guess if they have hard cast, hard cast force, they could kill me. And yes, I do mean force of virtue. Um, or mana tide will actually wreck me up here. I just don't. I guess I could pop the EE and go snap path the Gideon. Oh, that's way safer. Never mind. And I even have one mana up for mana tithe. So if they have double tithe, um, then I'm forced to jump lock, which is not the end of the world. <laughs> One snappy dresser. Snappy lad. Blunk. So what the hell is their handful of? Yeah, that's as expected again. Well, uh, yeah. We could have Force of Virtue here, which is... I think I gotta take the Brainstorm. I think this is the most likely to put me in a position to win this game. Okay, those are mostly good. I only get to keep two of these. So I guess Logic Knot and Manalik are the most important. I guess if they have two Force of Virtues, I'm dead no matter what. Um, if they have Force Mana Tide, they can wait till their turn. Unless I do this. Stupid flying tokens. Oh, I sure hope I put Archmage Storm on top. I don't think that I did. Maybe I did. No Force of Virtue. Banishing Light. Uh, that doesn't actually kill me. So I should let it resolve, but they have three more cards in hand, which makes me think that they're going to have the Force now. So this basically comes down to, did I put the right card on top? Because I'm going to have to Archmage's Charm next turn and try to draw into something with that. But I know the first card I'm going to draw is Mana Link. Oh, fine, screw it. She'll die a warrior's death. Oh, I had spent all. I would have to spend all my mana to counter this, uh, and my whole graveyard, which means if they have a mana tie, they get screwed here anyway. So it's fine. How did they get all those lands? It's not like I pathed them four times. Oh wait, I pathed them four times.
No force. Yikes. Well, I sure hope I put the Archmage's Charm on top. And there's also a... Verdict, two cards down. Nope. No, I did not. No, I did not. Crap. Aggressive deck full of flyers. Kills me in the end. We did not draw any timely reinforcements. Any one of which would have been really good in that game, but... Yeah. Just not, not drawing it up well enough. Close one, though. So we lost the Oops All Legends deck. That 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 feels fun. Alrighty. Do you think substituting Settler Wreckage for Supreme Verdict would work better if this league accurately represents the meta? Well, I don't think the league accurately represents the meta. If it did... Uh, maybe? I don't know. It's really hard to say, because, like, Mausoleum Wanderer and Hardcast forth with, Force with Vials in play out of the Merfolk screw us just as much that way so i don't think so i think the biggest problem with this league has just been gratuitous bad variants on our side like we, we've multi five at least twice six multiple other times opponent mulls to five here um the merfolk game right at the end we could have been okay we just weren't you know uh, game one and it's fine i mean this is this is one of those things that happens i mean every now and then you'll watch someone play a deck that they're very good with and they'll just always instant speed no i understand that but there are m most of the games we've been playing and losing um the instant speed nature of it is actually almost a downside they have to be attacking which means um not only does it have to be their turn like the, the tempo decks we've been playing up against are able to keep their mana up. Oh my. Uh, I can let them put the spell on the stack. Rhinos. See if we can find a verdict. Or not a verdict. Uh, well, verdict is okay. Is it? Uh, so two mana, they're going to put me to 12. Three mana... They're gonna put me to four four mana. I can I can verdict. Uh, this is something I could keep. I guess I could dig harder for force. They're down to two cards in hand. We get to go to fairy into verdict, so I actually get to cut the damage. Yeah, this this is probably okay. It's gonna be a little sketchy. I can only fetch once here, but I only need to fetch once here. I have enough lands to to bridge myself, so. Unless their hand has spell pierce. No, the spell pierce isn't enough. They need more. Um, spell pierce on my Teferi will be annoying, but not not going to kill me. Um, yeah, I would say aggro decks have definitely been very dominant. 
Funny that I bought him the timely on turn one. And uh, it would have been great here, in theory. But I guess these don't, these, these trample, so maybe not so much. No, and if I had bought him the timely, I would have been one card further away from this verdict. So it's fine. Anyway, um, but yeah, I mean, so when you said in this league in particular, I mean, we've been playing against blue aggro decks, though, and the blue aggro decks, I feel, by and large, the set all the wreckages are terrible. Um, that white deck I just played against, yeah, it would have been pretty okay, especially with all their indestructible creatures, but that, that white deck I played against was like a one in a million. So the, the blue aggro decks, uh, 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 shit. Um, settles way worse than Verdict. Way worse. Yeah, the uncounter ability is not kind of important. It's very important. The fact that it's sorcery speed, yeah, that's not the best, but... Um, and, the, like, the Spirits deck never spell quellered me. Not once. So, like, that was part of how I won that match was the fact that they never played a spell queller against me. So, okay. Um, they didn't draw another land, so Electro Dominance is not going to kill me here. But they could be playing bolts, so we might just die to that. Um, and I have no... I don't have any good action going right now. This should be as foretold into something. I feel like Wreckage would fare better on the board. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I have in, in other formats, in other far-flung Halcyon days... Um, yeah, Wreckage. Wreckage is definitely something I have sideboarded into, especially in Pioneer. Um... I haven't really done it in modern, but it's definitely something that could come up again. Perfect. So EOT, we go field into uh, snap opt. My client's responding really, really quickly today, which I'm a big fan of. Uh oh, are we about to get electro dominance for two? I hope not. Although if they electro dominance for two with no follow up spell, I'm pretty happy. Maybe they were just floating the mana to be efficient. It's their priority now. If they pass it, I think I'm not going to opt. I'm not, yeah. This is fine. We're in a good spot. I just need to not throw this game right now. Yeah. I. Uh, the numbers have been a little bit erratic. I don't think a lot of people are super excited about watching Blue Eye Control. And to be perfectly frank, I'm not that excited to be playing it been powerfully underwhelming i mean we, we've had a very weird league so it's fine I'm not you know i hope you're playing an ancestral visions build opponent remand crap uh, i think slivers is going to be way more interesting I have to fetch to one to play the cryptic command. But that's where we're at. Well, it 4 0 to prelim, and then the next day it 3 1 to prelim. So, I mean, the fact that there's a competitive Slivers deck that exists right now, I think, is the most remarkable thing. Obviously, the format is full of low-to-the-ground, super-aggressive decks, and I don't exactly understand why Slivers has been able to find a crack in the meta to exploit, but I'm, I'm reasonably happy about it. It's a tribal deck. Yeah. So this fetch land is basically useless. No, 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 no. I would never call that Slivers. I would never refer to that deck as Slivers. That deck is not Slivers. That deck is like Morophon, Sorin, uh, Obnoxious Combo, Morpheron deck. Morphon? Morphon. Another Footfalls. Um,
it's more clickbaity. I think I think saying slivers is clickbaity enough. I think if you tell someone you're playing slivers, that's already clickbait. So if you're playing the the Morophon the Boundless deck, you should probably tell people that you're playing a wild five color sliver lord all oops all cascade tribal uh opponent okay but but um 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 <laughs> what the fuck is that they played around me having force negation that's that's what that was That's exactly what that was. That was really unfortunate. They had everything they needed that game. I mean, it's it's fine. We finally get to board against a non-aggro deck, so I'm kind of excited. Um, I really don't like the sideboard click. Am I willing to have only Verdict and Teferi as ways to deal with Rhino tokens? Yes. Yeah, I mean, the way he phrased that, Roy, says I have an obsession with tribal decks. No, Noggles are sweet. I wouldn't call it a tribal deck. I would call it the Noggles deck. There's only one. Except no substitutions. They're cute as hell. They are donkey folk. I mean, it's hard to argue with donkey folk. The Sapperling deck that own, that has no copies of its namesake tribe in it. No. So if they don't have the counter for this, we spank them here. I think it's worth jamming on turn three. Three man, sure. But if they have rhinos here, we uh, we have verdict to follow it up immediately. So. We're not going to take any damage off the of rhinos. No, as foretold. That's interesting. Um, I think I'll just sit back this turn. They've, they've got more than enough mana. If they have force negation, they could just hard cast it. So just let them go this time. Uh, sure, let's try to draw two. They know I have Teferi in hand, so they'll be fairly unlikely to deal with that. Excellent. Hmm. With the dispute, I feel like I can just wreck them here. Unless they also have a dispute. Cool. Restore balance. Yeah, let's let's not though. Denied. Dovin says no. They can they can they can dispute my Teferi or pierce it now, that's fine. I don't care. We got a two for one, so I'm I'm totally fine with this.
Maybe I should have let that go. The Teferi is so valuable against them. I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh! Oh, that's not... Come on! What the fuck, man? Brutal. Okay, sorry. Uh, choose three lands you control. Click done to sacrifice the rest. Okay. Always read these stupid effects because they never work the same way. Choose two cards in hand. God damn it. Stupid bullshit. Ugh. Ah! I'm so annoyed. Where were all these decks last night? We played against nothing but burn. Not that I would have been excited to play against nothing but burn. I just would like a league that was a nice mix. I would like a I would like a, a league with some variety. That that would be fun for me. I, I would enjoy variety in my modern format. It's incredibly diverse right now, but every league I play is just like Oh look, it's all 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 decks that are playing blue with uh, nonstop uh nonstop cheap interaction to wreck my deck. Nothing but burn. Nothing but burn. Nothing but burn. So they've got the Ancestral coming in. We've got Dispute, Snap Dispute. So hopefully that's good enough to deal with that one. Uh, man, it's so not, though. All they need is Spell Pierce or, or Dispute of their own, and we got eaten on that one. Our set. Uh, no. Probably should have gone Cryptic, but... No, yeah, I don't like that. Oh, I've got a veto, so we can snap veto on the on the charm or on the visions. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that would have worked out, I guess. This is where we get surgical. No. Their ancestral already kind of did its work for them, though, because they got to pitch it out of their hand before they went electro balance, restore dominance. They're gonna reman their visions here. I have no idea what's happening. Oh, Electro dominance x equals two. Nope. Okay. I was correct. I, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Three Electro Dominances this game. Two Restore Balances. Yeah, we're just done. Fuck, man. Just absolutely wrecked. Eaten alive. They crushed us in game one with a Mold of Five. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, they did well.
Hey, what's up? I played the bad decks. Hope you are doing well. I hope your black green loam poxing has been uh, somewhat useful. We finally found the mirror match. Super. Seance. Yeah, I saw you were doing something with Seance. Four color loam. That sounds awesome. Like gifts, gifts into loam piles sounds like everything I want to be doing. Gifts into loam plus Raven's Crime plus etc. 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 But I just I'm not I I can't I, I really have a hard time being excited about anything like that because there's no more Uro. Stamp. Mm, let's not. Of course, of course. Why, um, okay. Why wouldn't that be what happens here? Okay. I have five more islands in my deck. I need to draw one. Well, okay then. I think I'm going to go with my Planeswalkers in order of, like, sort of lowest value. So, Narset is going to be a two-for-one at least if it resolves. So, I'm happy to throw it under the bus first. Okay, so it's already at least a two-for-one. Yeah, bolted in response is fine. I enjoyed my two-for-one. My Jace is much more comfortable now that you spent a bolt. Perfect. Um, and then we'll see... How this shapes up. If they do tap down to play anything at some point, it's possible we'll just jam the Teferi. I'm not throwing that totally out as an option. Just generally speaking, I want to go, I want it to go Narset into Jace into Teferi. I think generally speaking, although this turn I can play the Teferi and have me. No, 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 no. We're playing the Jace this turn because I can't play the Teferi with Mana Leak up, but do these decks play Force? Uh, 100%, yes. 110%. So that's part of the reason why I definitely, definitely want to have. Um, that's a sick draw. I definitely want to have the option to play the, the Mana Leak on the turn where I play the Teferi. This is by far the most valuable. So if they have Snap Bolt, I have Mana Leak for the Snap. If they have Force into the Snap Bolt. Okay, so we, we can brainstorm here. If they just have the Bolt in hand, again, we get two for one. Or no, we, we again, we two for one my opponent. But I think that's okay. No, no this is fine. We're, we're going to two-for-one our opponent in any direction. No matter what happens here, we're going to get the two-for-one on our opponent. So putting putting the Jace up to five is, is worth doing. 
So if I brainstorm now, if they just have the bolt or if they have snap bolts, they get to pressure my mana leak. Uh, do I want them to have a land? They've been missing land drops, but it's not a blue land, so I think that's okay. They can't cast Cryptic with that. Um, they felt compelled to slam the Blood Moon early, and I think it's punishing them more than it is me. I got super lucky. Nothing? Wow. That's that's a yikes from me, dog. So the Blood Moon's essentially a mulligan at this point, and then all of this has been working out quite poorly for them. Yeah, double bolt on my upkeep? No. No, they're not. Okay, that, that that feels like game. Resolving the first brainstorm on your Jace is like, oh yeah. Uh I get to hold on to this path to exile because I don't give up. Um Free sure, I just want to do this. Uh I won't be able to protect him from most things. Um, if the Teferi resolves, I can bounce the Blood Moon. They could play Force. I could Mana Leak. They could Mana Leak back. I wouldn't beat that. Eh. Now they have too many things to deal with. Pretty sure we're in good shape here. So this is their hard cast force. Yeah, it's gotta be. Honestly, if this resolves, I'm not bouncing their blood, man. I'm just plussing it. And then they're basically just donezo. Brazen Borrower hard cast. Well, I don't have mana up for path right now, so I will mana leak that. No force. That's... Okay. I apologize, opponent. I, I'm not proud of what I've done here. snappy dresser you got it lightning bolt okay bolt my jace very well double bolt my jace okay your play is acceptable You play Stone Blade one hundred percent of the time over this. Yeah, I think I can get on board with that. Can't get double white here, but I can timely. That's funny. Yeah, I think I'm with you, Jiggy. The thing that bothers me is Bant Stone Blade is the most playable version. But I guess Bant Stone Blade in the control setup is something I would be interested in playing, I suppose. 
So maybe even with Noble, because like, let's be honest, like you just playing to fairy time raveler with a one mana ramp is just like it's just one of the best things you can do in magic. Like, wh why why would I not do that? If I wanted to be competitive, Bant Stoneblade is probably the right place to be. But that said, I do not believe in, in the Squirrel. I don't think the Squirrel is bad. I just don't think the Squirrel is that good. I think the Squirrel is overhyped. I think not playing the Squirrel is much, 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 much better. That said, I did see a Naya version of... Uh, <laughs> what's up mr muffin man well if you're really hyped up about blue white control unfortunately you are here for the last match of this league but we are playing slivers up next so if you have entry any interest in slivers uh, that is that's coming up so stick around for that one this blue moon opponent looks thoroughly donezo you will also be able to go and watch this league on youtube later on and you can follow this link right here to get to my YouTube channel, where I post most every deck that I play. Ah, oh, no, my tokens, no, no. What am I gonna do? Did I change the URL? No. Why, did I screw up? Yeah, there's a URL shortener. What do you mean weird? Why is that weird? I feel like lots of people use URL shorteners and they are very useful and like a good thing to do. Is it, is it me being smart that's weird? Am I, am, I, am I making you uncomfortable by doing smart things in a way that makes sense? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. You live for the blue white leagues. Uh, I'm sorry to tell you, I haven't really been enjoying this one this much, but uh, because we played against a bunch of blue tempo creature decks, hit Merfolk and Spirits, and then a weird mono white, uh, oops, all legends with uh, Kithian and Thalia, yeah. I mean, I hate the I hate those archetypes. Like almost no matter what I'm playing, if I'm playing a deck I enjoy, Merfolk and Spirits are like some of the worst possible matchups. I think the, I think the decks that actually have a good matchup there are basically limited to like Burn. I think Burn probably has an excellent matchup against both those decks, and then I don't know what else, but. Oh, they found a mountain. That's exciting for them, I'm sure. Hey, how many lands of theirs do you think I can exile in one turn? Precipits now! Most extreme elimination, brainstorm! Goal is to leave them with nothing but their blood moon. Well, I I wanted to bounce something with my, uh, I wanted to bounce something with my Teferi. He was on nine loyalty. He deserved it. But you're right. If I had done this in the right order, they would have had nothing but the blood moon. I mean, their board is squeaky clean though. Fetch and response? Nope. Doesn't even fetch and response. Opponent's spirit has been fully broken.
They're just clocking me at this point. Hey, they're flagging me. You guys seen this opponent? What a total flag. I mean, I know I'm not supposed to use that word, but you know. Thanks for the follow, Muffin Man. I'm not saying they're attracted to other flags. I'm just saying, like, you know, they're not like, you know, they're not like a, you know, regular guy. My Teferi emblem! There's nothing for it to exile anymore. This is tough. This is this is this these are the hard times, people. It does look like Gabby Sparts. I keep thinking it's Gabby Sparts, but I think it must be someone way more famous. Can I exile my own stuff? You actually cannot. That's why it hasn't been trying to go on the stack, because there's no legal targets. Uh, I'll be back in half a second. We'll try to sideboard. All right, so we finally have a Vendillion click matchup. The click. Um, they were playing main deck engineered explosives, weren't they? Wild. Do I want mentor here? Kind of. And dispute is the most important thing. Okay, so the, the easy cut is oust. Um, and then probably the verdicts. We saw Bone Crusher, but I'm not too concerned about it. So that's three. Maybe the vetoes are a bit much, but I do feel like we're going to get into some counter wars where that's going to be relevant. Lots of forces. Maybe we can just shave a path here. Oh, I cut the main deck. Okay, there we go. Okay, that seems nice and clean. I do want some number of paths because we saw Bone Crushers, and those can get out of hand in a hurry if you don't have any way to deal with them. Plus, pathing Snapcasters is like, it's not great, but sometimes it's necessary. Spell Snare should be pretty A plus here. Hey, look, keepable hand. I think I'll keep it. Gust Purge considerations. Yeah, I considered them for about a half a second until I realized I was playing against the blue red deck that was playing like 85% blue spells. But yeah, I mean, I looked at them and I was like, like the red cards I care about are Blood Moon and also Blood Moon. So like, yeah, totally, totally, totally. Post board considerations. I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, I mean... So they're not playing a boil um, resistant mana base as far as what they showed us. They had a ton of steam vents in play last turn and, and all sorts of that. So um, I'm not really, I'm not feeling it on that one. Um, 
We get to play some like truly classic control magic here. We're literally both sitting here staring at each other, waiting until one of us starts missing land drops, I think. Um, ideally, I would not like them to jam Jace the Mind Sculptor here because I actually don't have a counter for it. But uh, they didn't know that, and uh, they didn't jam into it. And now I do. I live in fear of the boogeyman from the newer sets. That's fair. That's fair. I, I yeah, No, you know what? I could totally get wrecked by something that is a red card, but since I don't know what it is, I'm not going to worry about it right now. And, like, my all-purpose counter magic can deal with most stuff. So, like, what I'm worried about is them getting me with something that's, like, randomly cheap, which probably is low impact and therefore... In the abstract, I'm not super worried about it. I, I hope that makes some kind of sense. Double path is a little rough in the early game. I think I made some kind of sense there. Like anything that's cheap enough to slip by my all purpose counter magic is probably not super dangerous. Yeah, okay, I did take out my verdict. So I'm just getting an island with this. Are they going to charm here? I just don't have a counter for this. It's fine. It's not the end of the world. I think I'm going to attempt to resolve Nurse at this turn because... Um, Honestly, because my hand is pretty weak, and I need to get something going. All right, Spell Snare, now's your time to shine. The time has come, the walrus said. Yikes. I don't think this is going to be Mana Leak. Probably not Mystical Disputes. Is that also from a movie? It's in the uh, Alice in Wonderland movie, the animated one. This is Force Negation. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's from Alice in Wonderland, so I don't know how you classify that. You don't remember it. But you knew what it... <laughs> but you knew about the Talking Walrus. Yeah, the Cheshire Cat. Yeah. Time has come, the walrus said, to talk of many things, of shoes and ships and sealing wax and cabbages and kings. And while the sea is boiling hot and whether pigs have wings. It's, uh, it's Lewis Carroll, so it's just full of nonsense. I, th I think that poem and at least one other in there are were were written before he wrote Alice in Wonderland or just not like they were just not in any way part of it, but maybe not. Potus has decent taste in basics. Yeah, they're uh non matching, which I guess some people would be really tilted about. I personally don't really care. Not quite yellow border. I mean, I could get a magic marker and draw on my on my screen. Would that help, Roy? Is that something you'd like? I have a highlighter somewhere nearby. I've also got multiple Sharpies. If you want to mean a black border. <laughs> no, that sounds like an awful idea. I mean, I agree with you. I didn't say it because I thought it was a good idea. <laughs> what was it with the highlighter and a monitor? And yeah, the monitor's not that good. Alright. Um, I'm going to do this fetching now. Because I want to play click with the click with the Khifti uh, back up. I don't need double white basics, but I also don't need to not have double white on my basics, so let's go. 
I think I'm actually going to click myself because I want to get rid of this path to exile. If it resolves. Pretty sure I want to cycle one of these paths. I guess knowing exactly what is in their hand, though, is a ridiculously high value. I'm assuming this is not resolving, so it probably doesn't matter. This looks like, is it charm? I don't know why my brain is saying this is, is it charm? Snapcaster. Yeah, but what if you didn't, though? Cryptic. Sure. And what are they going for? They're just going for the snare. Um, yeah, right. They still have to cast the counter on my click, on my click. So this is fine, right? Because then on my turn, I get to resolve to fairy in theory. Um, especially if I draw. So seven mana. Hopefully we draw a land or a piece of cheap interaction so that I can play Jace with interaction up. Yeah, no problem. Okay, uh, if I want to path this, I might as well do it now. <sighs> yeah, I do. Do they have any more basics? That's, that's got to be most of them. If maybe they have a second mountain? No, they're out. Okay, that's really good. I mean, it's not that good. Oh, perfect. Every play that I look at in each game that I'm playing... And I ask myself, Roy, I go through a very rigorous series of questions, and I have to ask myself, is that a banger? Top deck to fairy time raveler. Is it a banger? Pretty sure it is. Not gonna lie. I think it was a good one. Sinkhole. Well. I mean, I'll get my cryptic while I can. <laughs> Sounds like a Christopher Walken narrates MTG clip. It's, it's uh, there, there's a, there is a song that gets played on Strifo's channel um, that uses that clip, and that clip is apparently from Parks and Rec, which I've never watched. Snap on the sinkhole. Hell yeah. Yes. You go, girl. We're finding Amy Polar Dope and Chris Pratt underwhelming. Yeah, you're probably not the only one. He is really good in Guardians of the Galaxy, though. He's very, very good in those movies. Rashida Jones. I think I know who that is. Um, Aubrey Plaza. Isn't she on Brooklyn Nine-Nine? Or is she in both? Or am I just thinking of someone different? Probably just thinking of someone different. I feel like Aubrey is the right name, but Plaza might not be. Quincy Jones is his daughter. Okay, got it. That is not who I'm thinking of. They have a Jace. Um, yeah, right. You imagine Quincy Jones has many children? As many as George Foreman? Here are three of my legitimate sons who are also named George. He actually does have, like, multiple sons named George. I, b I believe this is, in fact, factual. 
But then on King of the Hill, they had the his one of his daughters who's a boxer. He does have a lot of kids. A lot of kids. No. You get the hell out. Oh, they got a free shuffle. They have a Jason friend and give him a free shuffle. Oh, God. Why am I so bad at this game? Jesus. Jesus Christ. All right. That's an insanely good draw. Do I just tuck their Jace? I mean, I guess... Yeah, it's it's almost definitely better than drawing one random card. Plus, I have Force here to deal with most things they could do. I could play my own Jace first. And then plus on them. Yeah, that doesn't, you know. No, no, no. No, no. We're just doing this. It, there is a setup of cards in their hand that could absolutely mess me up here. Bolts certainly would make me unhappy, but we have force into Jace, so I'm pretty happy about it. I also have force and leak up, even without a Teferi on tap, which is kind of nuts. Um, This looks like a cryptic command. That is not acceptable, opponent. And I really enjoyed my last watching of uh, Inglorious Bastards. The movie was great. I don't know why I ever thought that movie wasn't that great. Nine! Nine, 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 nine. Yeah, Christoph Waltz was a fantastic. Do they have the mystical dispute here? Oh, they have no fetch. That's phenomenal. Oh, no. Oh, no, opponent. All right. Definitely going to fade seal. So underneath this is... No. No, underneath... The, the next two cards is the Jace, so I can put this on the bottom. They did whiff on their fetch. Oh, no, wait, right, the Jace isn't there anymore. They shuffled. We're good, we're good. Yeah, they whiffed on their fetch. So we passed them off their basics earlier, and I guess they ran out of steam vents, because there's one... What? One, two, that's it? No. What? What, what, what? So, I've gambled it all and lost. Well played, opponent. Well played. I guess I'll keep redundant planeswalkers plus veto plus force. This seems good. This game looks over. Yeah. Yeah, this, this game looks really over. Like... What's the best thing they could hit? The best thing they could hit is Snapcaster Mage because I can't counter it. Um, I can counter the things that surround a Snapcaster Mage. So it's like, they're not going to get any value off a of Snap, but I, I can't actually counter the Snap itself. I guess Click or Brazen Borer or Bone Crusher would be really good here, but I'm, I have the sneaking suspicion they've boarded out their Bone Crusher. Sad to report that Thoughtseize is 99% better of the time than Peak. Uh, I have a question for you, Jiggy. Is it better if you have no Swamps in play? Is it better if it's your opponent's turn and you don't have a Teferi Time Raveler? I think not. Got him. Wrecked. Wrecked. Still better versus Titan. Damn! You are definitely right. You know, it's also better against basically everything. I I don't know if there is a matchup where it's not the better card. So, oh no. Oh, phone with the spell snare. Oh, oh no. I, oh gosh, I sure am in trouble now. G, G golly, whiz, whiz bang. Nerds, nuts and nuts and gum. 
Best best idea of my life, you know? Nobody will listen. Oh shoot, I should have attacked them. Should I? No. I'm gonna win this I'm gonna win this with planeswalkers. We're going to Fairy Emblem again. It's my my inner Morty coming out. Oh, um, oh, oh, geez, Roy, you know, it's just, it, it's in, in one ear and out the other, you know, it's how they say it. That's sometimes you win and sometimes you goose egg. You gotta, you gotta roll a, roll a one on ish, initiative uh, from time to time. You never watch Rick and Morty. All right. Well, post pandemic, we won't fix that. Fair warning. It's fine. It's fine. You know? It's, uh... I, I think the show is very good, but I also think, like, so many things that I've loved in my life, the fan base has ruined it for many people. Lincoln would care about that subtlety. Um, I mean... There is a, a half Lincoln, half Hitler hybrid. In Rick and Morty. Oh yeah, you watched my movie, but did you see it? You see, I used a little something called metaphor, Joan. See, I was that giraffe. He's Pickle Rick. That he is. Do I have a spell snare in my graveyard? Hell yeah, I do. One snappy lad. One snapcaster washes the other, wouldn't you say, opponent? One snapcaster washes the other. Yeah, Pickle Rick is a thing in Rick and Morty. There's an episode where Rick turns himself into a pickle. Snap, or sorry, EE -E for two. You got it. Resolves. It's the best episode. It's pretty good. It is a very good episode. And then the, the veiled symbolism is also excellent. All right. So two, three with blue white control. I did not particularly enjoy this version. Um, two verdicts felt light. Also, the lack of shark typhoons, I wasn't a huge fan of. Um, yeah. I think this deck would have been relatively well set up for, like, an all-aggro meta, and that is what happened in that challenge. If you look at that challenge that uh, was won by this, it was, like, mostly heavily creature decks and heavily aggressive decks. But for the league we just played, it was obviously, like, not the best setup. Which is fine, you know? Sometimes you play these heavily metagame decks, and uh, when you don't run into that specific metagame, it doesn't work out so good, which is fine. I think blue-white control is still okay, although I'd be interested in checking out blue-white stone blade or banned stone blade uh, next time. Not super enthused about either of them. I like hard control a lot, but it's very difficult right now. The aggressive decks are so freaking good in this format. Um, that said, we're going to hop over to an aggressive deck of our own. We're going to play some Modern Slivers. So if you are here live with me, stick around. And if you Meanwhile. Are on the YouTube, make sure you smash that like button, check out that subscribe button, see some other videos, and I will see you there.